Ankara to act. EU leaders are talking migration with Turkey's Prime Minister at an emergency summit in Brussels. Turkey is under pressure to take back economic migrants and tackle smugglers in return for aid and concessions. The summit itself shows how indispensable Turkey for EU and for Europe for Turkey. We have many challenges in front of us. The only way to uh, uh, respond to these challenges is solidarity. I am sure these uh, challenges uh, will be solved uh, through our cooperation. And Turkey is ready to work with EU. Turkey is ready to be a member of EU as well. The increased cooperation with Turkey comes at a difficult time as Ankara cracks down on media freedoms flying in the face of European values. Cooperation with Turkey doesn't mean we accept anything and everything that Turkey asks for, he says. We have to be extremely vigilant, and I am, about certain measures, decisions that have been taken, notably about press freedom. The press needs to be free, like elsewhere. With beefed up borders leaving thousands stranded in Greece, closing the Balkan route to Germany is also up for discussion. That and help for Athens to cope with the backlog. Our reporter says facing the migration crisis, the EU is now backed into a corner. The EU is giving a lot of importance to the support that Turkey could bring. The Turkish Prime Minister has visited Brussels twice in three months. And for Ankara, the solution to the crisis is tied to the resolution of the Syrian conflict. The bottleneck of more than 13,000 migrants at the Greek-Macedonian border has added to the urgency at the talks with Turkey and Brussels today. With Macedonian officials imposing further restrictions on the number of migrants it's allowing through onto its territory, the situation is growing more desperate in cold and wet conditions. I hope they will open the border for everyone after this meeting and everyone can go start new lives, escaping from the war and our last life. Greece says it has a backlog of more than 30,000 migrants across its territory. We cannot force the European country to, to, to do something, but they should take care by uh, humanity. You're not going to go back for sure. Where I go? If I go, I will die. EU officials are warning the number of migrants in Greece, many of whom want to reach Germany and other countries further north, could swell by more than 10,000 by the end of this month. There are signs the main Syrian opposition council will attend a fresh round of UN peace talks in Geneva later this week. A member of the council has told the Reuters news agency there was what he called an inclination to attend. Although another member has told other reporters a decision is yet to be made. The attendance of the main opposition is said to be dependent on a drop in the number of violations of a fragile ceasefire. This video uploaded to social media websites on Sunday purported to show rebels from the Jaish al tahrir group firing at Kurdish fighters in Aleppo. Other amateur footage shows a house flattened by shelling in Aleppo. It's unclear if this was related to an attack on Sunday on a market in Aleppo that reportedly killed at least 14 civilians. We will be back as soon as possible with quality and unbiased news. The website of Turkey's Zaman has been out of action since authorities pulled the plug on it and seized control of the country's top-selling newspaper on Friday. Turkey's move has been widely criticized by EU leaders worried about a media crackdown. I had a very open exchange with the Prime Minister who uh, disagreed with my uh, point of view. I think this is not a surprise. Um, and um, I insisted that for the European Parliament and for the European Union, freedom of uh, media is a key element of our uh, European identity. On Saturday, Turkish police fired tear gas and rubber bullets to disperse protesters who'd gathered outside the newspaper's office after the takeover. Zaman was linked to U.S.-based cleric Fethullah Gulen, who Ankara says was plotting a coup. 
Last month, two journalists were released from jail after Turkey's top court ruled their rights had been violated. The pair had been accused of treason over a report alleging the government tried to ship weapons to Islamists in Syria. The gloves were off as U.S. Democratic candidate Bernie Sanders took on frontrunner Hillary Clinton. The argument quickly became over who was in the best position to beat Republican Donald Trump in the race to the White House. We are, if elected president, going to invest a lot of money into mental health. And when you watch these Republican debates, you know why we need to invest in mental health. The debate in Flint, Michigan, touched on trade and the auto industry bailout, religion, and Clinton hitting hard at Sanders on gun control. I also believe so strongly, Gene, that giving immunity to gun makers and sellers was a terrible mistake because it removed any accountability uh, from the makers and the sellers. Sanders has struggled to slow Clinton's march to the presidential nomination. While he won Sunday's caucus in Maine, she picked up Louisiana. Senator Sanders. Police in the Australian city of Sydney say a gunman who triggered a six-hour standoff at a factory is dead. They say the man shot and killed one person and wounded two others before apparently shooting himself. Police negotiators and a tactical response team had tried to gain access to the building. Three factory workers who had been trapped inside the building walked out unharmed. Local media reported the three men were taken to hospital, although none appeared seriously injured. A detective from New South Wales Police said officers had a suspect in mind, but declined to name him. The government of Ethiopia and the United Nations have asked for help to feed more than 10.2 million Ethiopians. A long-standing drought has led to increasing hunger. The UN says funding shortages mean food aid is in short supply and malnutrition will rise dramatically if donor money runs out. Ethiopia and the UN have asked for the equivalent of 1.2 billion euros. 50 to 90 percent of crop and livestock losses have been reported and in the eastern part of the country complete destruction. Poor grazing for animals has led to high livestock mortality rates. Limited water has resulted in sharp declines in milk and meat production, a vital source of nutrition. Ethiopia has one of Africa's fastest growing economies, but many people are still small-scale farmers who depend on seasonal rains. Now that the rains have started, many farmers have no seeds. It's not just a food crisis, it's a livelihood crisis. Commemorations are underway to mark two years since Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 vanished en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing with 239 people on board. In Beijing, relatives of Chinese passengers on the missing flight have filed a lawsuit against Malaysia Airlines. Despite daily visits to the airline's office to understand what may have happened to their loved ones, they feel they're being ignored. We're here to go after Malaysia Airlines, Boeing, Rolls-Royce and anyone else who's responsible because they didn't provide us with the support we were entitled to. They caused us harm and we will ask for compensation. Experts are now studying a piece of debris found last week on a beach in Mozambique. If it's confirmed to be a piece of the missing flight, it would be the second to wash up on the shore. Last year, a section of the plane's wing was found off Reunion Island.